What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to talk about fuel consumption on a speedboat. I'm going to draw it up for you, show you all the details. Hope you're going to like it, so let's get going. Alright guys, a few things to consider. We have a boat, um, it's the envelope, so let's draw a line here. like that this is going to be a speed and uh, knots or also you can say that that is nautical miles per hour right gonna have a uh, so we're driving pretty slow we have the boat and an envelope with a wave Something like that, I guess. And that means that you still have some up and force on the stern of the boat, pretty good. And I would say this is about zero to, I would say this is about zero to five knots, maybe. Then as you increase speed with the boat, you're gonna start seeing the wave become a little bit longer. Uh, and also the upward force on the stern is uh, diminished quite a lot and that means that the boat's gonna have an uphill battle here uh, pushing up against its own wave uh, that will of course increase drag and the engines need to work harder this usually happens anywhere from perhaps like depending on boat from eight maybe some boat perhaps up to ten or something not uh, and then of course that will increase as you uh, start to get on plane and you will have even more drag and you will get that little tail little camel thing coming up this usually happens around maybe 10 to 15 16 knots or something like that uh, that's where you got really huge upswell and the stern of the boat starts sitting really deep into that wave uh, and then you come up to about 18 to 22 knots and that is when you have decent plane I mean you don't you're not on top of the water but you still you're in front of your own wave which is the definition of a planing boat and then from uh, I mean 20 to 24 depending on the boat you'll be up and running a pretty nice plane stable boat up above the water so if you put another line here, and we call that uh, it's called fuel fuel unit per nautical mile. It's the fuel unit. It could be gallons. It could be liters. Doesn't matter. It's just the dimensions we're not looking for here. Um, so what I've seen with my own studies and also looking at data from other different boat manufacturers and so on and pretty, pretty low fuel consumption in the beginning and it just starts going up pretty high up here in this envelope uh, we keep pushing that up and then we come to plane and the fuel consumption drops down a little bit and then it just moves away so what I usually do is I never go above about 6.5 or 7 knots it's uh, where I stop so I'm in within this envelope or I am within this envelope here also my two choices and uh, that's the lowest fuel consumption per nautical mile with the speed I get around I usually go about 21 to 23 knots and I'm about 0 to 6.5 knots down here and even though there's a speed limit of perhaps 8 or 12 knots or something like that I usually slow down to my 6.5 knots uh, I usually always calculate my fuel consumption from nautical miles 
as I have a destination I want to go to, I don't calculate it in hours because speed differs depending on where I am in the cruise. And also speed limit is of course a factor that you need to consider uh, when you choose routing and so on. What I've seen is here in Sweden, uh, at least we have signs for different uh, shipping lanes that will say 12 knots. I think you get that in your uh, GPS plotters and so on. You will also get that speed information. But what we also do, or have here, is additional sign for that 12 knots. And that will be uh, for ship only. And the definition of ship varies from country to country used to be from above 12 meters in Sweden and that changed that definition to 24 meters but I'm not sure how that actually translates into the 12 knot limit but what I see from this is that in this envelope around 12 knots fuel consumption is, is really high depending on uh, if you compare it to how far you will get uh, at that speed and I see uh, people drive 12 knots even though they don't need to do that. So that's interesting. So they put their stern of the boat down, get a high fuel consumption uh, compared to how far they will get uh, in speed. So that's why I always in this envelope or in that envelope, and I try to avoid these other. Of course, I go up here sometimes if you wanna have some fun, uh, push it up to 35, 40 knots, no problem. But fuel consumption just goes up. So fuel consumption up here, will increase due to uh, friction both in water and with air. Um, you will get the friction going there and right here is due to the angle you have uh, of the boat uh, towards the wave that the boat is creating. So be down here, small wave, uh, have some push up on the stern, the boat's pretty level, and increase the speed up the plane. The stern will sit down in its own wave and create the big upward hill and which the engines need to counteract with high fuel consumption uh, but then when you come up to plane uh, fuel consumption will drop relativity and will be a better economy uh, given the uh, type of distance you can travel with that speed and also guys depending I mean I haven't written here either liter or gallons there or anything like that uh, we don't have the weight of the boat I've, I've seen that this is uh, a theory that is uh, works for almost any size of boat. Uh, perhaps this, uh, of course, boat planes at different speed. But I've, I've looked at boats from maybe, let's say, what could be 20 to 30 feet or something like that, uh, that match more or less this pattern. So uh, going into the uh, mathematics of it, there's a far formula that says V hull equals 2.427 square root length. length of the water line. So my boat is about V O for my boat equals 2.427 square root. Let's say my boat has a wave length in the water line at 8 meters. So V O equals 8 square root times 2.427 6 6.8 knots that's the within the almost within the envelope that I choose to be in uh, and that's pretty that's a maximum speed in what's called uh, most economic speed for my for the length uh, of my boat so uh, that's why I choose to be there and then of course it's a painting boat so that's why I also choose uh, of course a uh, plain envelope up here uh, but try to avoid this area here to get good fuel economy and also good environmental impact as possible all right guys thanks a lot for watching that's it for this episode hope you liked it hit that like button please subscribe hit that notification so you don't miss out on any future videos and i'll see you in the next one